Okay, guys, we are moving on to question seven, which is more a calculus type of questions, right? So we're seeing a lot of derivatives. You're seeing a lot of sort of, um, you know, these sort of weird questions at the end where it's like, what are you actually asking me? Where it's sort of like perpendicular and tangents and all these sort of things, but we'll get there. Don't worry. Let's just jump into the first question. Typical question, they will always ask you a question about first principles, okay? So they're saying determine the derivative. You need to know this notation, okay? Okay, oh, goodness gracious me, Marks, derivative. I should have practiced that before that, <laughs> before this. If it's spelled wrong, I sincerely apologize. Um, from first principles, if it is given that f of x equals this, okay? When you see first principles, you must jump into your head. Go to your formula sheet, and you see here, there's our first principles um, uh, formula, okay? So we're just going to write that down, 7.1, okay? So we're going to say f dashed of x, right, equals, sorry, I'm like moving papers around like the most, yeah? The limit as h goes towards 0, okay? when f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, important to write down that formula correctly. Okay, let's now put in what we need to. Okay, so we know that f of x, right, is 4 minus 7x. So let's just sub this in because when it says x plus h, it's now saying wherever there's an x over here, now put in a x plus h instead. Okay, so... Don't, like, stress. These, these questions are so irritating, actually, because they are just, like, really long. But they're not difficult, okay? So, now we're going to say 7x plus h minus 4 plus 7x. Okay. Now, you might be saying, where does this plus come from? I've basically gone like this. Okay, then I've just multiplied it through. A minus and a minus make a plus. Okay, over h. Very important. Signs are very important because if you don't put your signs correctly, you are going to get quite a strange answer. Okay, so 4 minus 4, that gives me 0. Then I'm going to have negative 7x, negative 7h, plus 7x over h. Okay, remember we don't ever drop this until we have subbed in h equaling to 0. Okay, that's important. Oh, goodness, well, I don't know what I'm writing there. Um, because that is incorrect if you drop it before subbing it in. Then I have 7h over h. Those h's cancel. Okay? So my answer is just 7h. Okay? So the reason it's just 7h here and I drop that is because now there's no h's in order to sub in 0. Okay? So my answer is negative 7. If you want to check that, let's just do the shortcut, right? So we know... Well, if f of x equals 4 minus 7x, the derivative, right, we just, so the derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of x is just the coefficient here, so it would be 7. So this is our little check. We know that we are correct. Okay, obviously don't mark your work. Don't mark your own work, guys, in your exam. But we know that it's correct. We've tested it. Okay, cool. Yeah, marking your own work. I don't know if that, how well that will go down with the marker, but there we go. Okay, 7.2. Okay, that's four marks in the bag. Very easy. Now, we get to a little bit more of a tricky one, okay? So now, once you get dy of dx, which is, again, just a different way of displaying the derivative, right, of this equation. But now, they've given us a young square root, and these guys can cause havoc sometimes. But let's not panic, okay? So, we say y equals 4x to the 8 plus square root of x to the 3, Okay. Now, I want us to write this in a slightly different form, right? And this is how I want us to write it. The reason being, it's a lot easier to get the derivative when you see it like this than when you see it like this. And these two things mean exactly the same thing, right? This is a square root, okay? And that means that it's actually whatever, whatever the exponent is here, just divide it by 2. Now, let's get dy by dx. How do we do that? We take the, ex the exponent here, times it by 4, and then we subtract 1 from that exponent. Do the same here. 3 over 2. Subtract 1 would be a half. Okay? If you're not following here, I'm basically right. You just need to be quite good with your, sort of your fractions, but also with your multiplication. If you're not good with that, check it on your calculator, but this is your final answer. Okay? dy by dx, 
derivative. Cool, so that's like, isn't it too, it isn't too difficult, right? But it's testing whether you can convert this into this and whether you know how to get the derivative via the shortcut and not first principles. Oh, I'm not even showing you what I'm doing there. Sorry about that. Okay, so there we go. Does that make sense? Okay, you can't answer me, Marks. But let's move on to the next question. So 7.3.1. Okay, so it says, given this equation, find these two things. So this is easy, dy by dx. We've just done it up there. So we know that y equals ax squared plus a. So dy by dx says, find the derivative of this equation in terms of x. All right, so we don't care about the a's. The a's are basically constants to us here. Okay, so in terms of this, it would be 2ax plus 0. So it would just be 2ax. Okay, so let me just make sure you can see what I'm writing there. That would be the answer there. They want it, they're basically saying, take this, right, take this y function and get the derivative in terms of x, and that is what we've done. Okay, let's now move on to the next question. Okie dokes. Okay, let's now do the next question, which is 7.3.2. So again, we still have y equals ax squared plus a. But here they've asked us for dy by dA. So we are getting the derivative in terms of a this time and not x. So we don't care about x. x. X is like whatever. We're just interested in a. So the derivative of a here would just be x squared, because it's basically saying what, what is next to a, and what's next to a is just x squared. Then here, right, the coefficient of this a is 1, right, and that is your whole answer, okay. It's important, because what, they're, what you're displaying to them is that you understand what this notation means, okay. So it's very important to see what you're getting the derivative in terms of, okay. So that is that. Let's now move on to the last question of question 7. So these are these questions that sometimes when you read them, you're like, oh, I'm just going to skip them. But don't skip them. Give, them. give them a go, guys. So it says, the curve with the equation, x, y equals x plus 12 over x, passes through this point. Okay? It says, determine the equation of the line perpendicular. What does that mean? Right angle. To the tangent to the curve at a. Okay, so now we're like, okay, there's a lot of moving pieces here. What's going on? Let's just find out, right, what B is, okay? That's simple enough. We give an equation. We're given a point. Let's just solve for B, okay? Let's do that first, and then we'll go from there. The trick with these is not to try do all of it at once. It's to do one thing at a time, and often in doing one thing, it helps you find out what the next thing is to do, okay? So let's just sub in what that equals. So this here is going to be B. So B equals 2 plus 12 over 2, which is 2 plus 6. So B equals 8. Okay, so already you would have got a mark there. Okay, you would have already got a mark there. Okay, so now let's read the rest of the question. It says, determine the equation of the line perpendicular to the tangent to the curve at A. So we want the tangent at a. Okay, how do we get the tangent? Oh, we know, derivative. I don't know if I'm going to spell this name, this right again. Deriv I don't know if that, derivative, it seems right. Okay, cool. So, let's get the tangent, right? So, basically, they want us to get dy by dx. Okay, so, dy by dx, we're looking at this equation here. Okay, Let's first write y in a slightly different form just to help us out, right? Because sometimes it's a little bit tricky to figure out these questions, okay? That is the same way of writing that. So now it's a little bit easier. dy by dx, let me try that again. dy by dx is, so the coefficient there is 1. Then here it's going to be negative 12x minus 2, okay? So it's going to be 1 minus 12 over x squared. Okay, so that is that answer there. So that is dy by dx. So now we know, right, that this is the equation of the, der of the derivative at, right, well, not at a point yet, of this, this y graph. 
But what they asked is they wanted it specifically at A, right? Specifically at A. So let's get, right, at A. Let's get dy by dx at, at A, right? So at A, it is 1 minus 12 over 2 squared, right? Which is 1 minus 12 over 4, which is 1 minus 3. It's always good if you show people what you're doing, Margs, which equals negative 2. Okay, so that is, right, the, the derivative, right, of this y. Let's just go over this one more time. This dy by dx is the derivative of this function. What is the derivative, guys? It is the gradient. So important. It is the gradient, right? Remember, when we look at, like, y equals mx plus c, m is our gradient, okay? So effectively, what we've done over here is we have found the gradient of the tangent, right, at point A. So we know that. Great. That's fa fantastic. But it hasn't asked us, right, for that, has it? It said determine the equation of the line perpendicular to this tangent. So we need to find, right, the equation of the line that is perpendicular to this line that has a gradient of negative 2. Now, what we know is that the, when we have two tangents that are perpendicular to each other, right, we know that when you have the one gradient, so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say the gradient of that times the gradient of the second one, right, it must equal negative one. But this is when m1 is perpendicular to m2. And I might be saying, Mark, so what is m1 and what is m2? This is the gradient, the gra sorry, the gradient of one line, and this is the gradient of a second line, okay? All we're saying is that these two lines are perpendicular to each other. So their two gradients have to equal negative one. This is a rule, guys. If you don't understand this, I will go back to your notes. This is very basic stuff as part of sort of the, the work that we do on tangents, right? So you must always remember this. When you see perpendicular, you must always remember this formula. I don't think it's I don't think it is given to you. No, it's not given to you. So you must learn this, okay? So now we know that the gradient of one line here is negative two. Okay. So it's pretty easy now, right? So the gradient of this perpendicular line, this perpendicular line at point A is actually 1 over 2. And now we see that 1 over 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 1. It fulfills that condition. And now what we have, right, is we know that that perpendicular line, right, the perpendicular line to the tangent at the curve at A, right, seems like a lot of things. We've already figured that out. we figured that out. We now are just chilling over here, right? We know that Y equals MX plus C. We know that our gradient is a half right? But we know that it goes through the point A, right? It goes through the point A. They've told us that at A. So now all we need to do, sub in our points of A, get C, and then we're done. Okay. So we're going to say Y equals A. I mean, Y equals 8, <laughs> not A. Okay. Then we put that in there. Okay. Which gives us, okay, which means that C equals 7. Okay, so what is our final answer there? Right, it's y equals half x plus 7. Okay, so now that is how you get it. Let's just go over that one more time in case I lost you at any point and I don't like losing anyone, like everyone to be involved. So let's just check what we did. We said, okay, this is the function we're looking at and it goes through A. Sub in 2 to get the value of P, I mean B. We got that. Then we said, okay, let's get the derivative, which is the gradient, right, of the tangent at point A. We got the derivative. We subbed in A and we said, okay, that is the gradient. That is the gradient. I'm actually going to write it here. This is the gradient of the tangent at A. Okay, that's that. But it now said, right, we want the perpendicular line to the tangent. And we know that the gradient of the tangent times the gradient of the perpendicular line to the tangent, if you multiply their two gradients together, you get negative 1. Then we said, okay, well, we know the gradient of the tangent, and we know it needs to equal negative 1. 
So the gradient of the perpendicular to the tangent equals a half. Then we join back to our old trusted friend, y equals mx plus c. We subbed in our gradient, we subbed in our point at a, we solved for c, and then we got our final equation. Okay, I hope that was helpful, guys. Now we're moving on to question eight. Only a couple of questions left.